Your Honor, I think of Richard's life as being before surgery and after surgery. Before surgery, he graduated from Presbyterian College in four years, majoring in history and meeting lifelong friends, ones here today. My son had a very good life. He had a career he loved. For 20 years, he served as law enforcement agent, rising up through the ranks. He had other opportunities, but he loved law enforcement. You need to know the change that took place in him after the surgery. Excuse me. It all started with a massive seizure caused by a softball-sized tumor embedded in his right frontal lobe. It took two surgeries to remove it, one to stop the blood flow going into the tumor, the second to remove that part of the brain where the tumor was embedded. The brain surgery saved his life and it ruined his life. He lost the tumor, but he also lost the brain tissue it was embedded into in the right front lobe. He lost everything, made him the unique, bright, capable man that I knew. He lost judgment, discernment, restraint, reason, and impulse control. Even his keen sense of humor was different. It was ruder, crude, coarse. His manner of speech changed, more rapid and like gunfire sometimes. He had a very short memory. After telling something one day and the next day he wouldn't remember it. Even the gait of his walk and the way he presented himself changed. It wasn't long before bizarre behavior caused him to lose his job. The same day, he lost his wife and his home. It was a downhill run. Shortly after that, in 2015, my, his dad, my husband, died suddenly on the golf course. My son quickly derailed. He had worked for 20 years, and now he couldn't hold a job. He had no attention span and he rambled at times making entirely no sense. His life was in shambles. He became homeless, indigent, living in a homeless shelter. I believe he is alive today because God isn't finished with him yet. He has a plan for his life. Richard can and still be of service to the community. He can still help others in some way through volunteering. Like now, in March of 2019, I walked into the Bank of America in Polly's Island. I approached the teller to the far left and handed her a note demanding money. She complied immediately. I, I took the money and exited the bank. At no time was she or anyone else in any danger. However, she had every right to believe that she was. And I know that she was terrified. I created a victim that day, Your Honor, and for that I am truly remorseful. I will carry that for the rest of my life. I pray that she will heal and move forward. Your Honor, in October of 2009, I was serving as the Chief of Police for the town of Williamson. One evening, I arrived home after work. I remembered walking into our bedroom, but did nothing. I woke up in bed in my uniform. My wife was standing over me. She said, Richard, you have a seizure. EMS and first responders are on the way. Never having had a seizure, I didn't believe her. But I still soon, still soon found myself in the back of an ambulance headed to Greenville Hospital. After a CAT scan, the ER doctor told me gravely, Mr. Hemman, you have a brain tumor. He said that I would be admitted. Never having spent a night in the hospital, I was terrified. I spent two nights in the hospital for MRIs. A few weeks later, I had my first ever surgery. It lasted 10 and a half hours. The tumor was, according to my neurosurgeon, the size of a softball. After 10 days in the hospital, I went back to work. We had a missing 15-year-old girl to find. We did find her. She'd been murdered by her mother. It was the last homicide I would ever work. I stayed on at Williamson for another year. I don't remember anything from that last year, nothing, not one single case. It's all just a fog. Your Honor, I don't know how a doctor removes a brain tumor, but one thing I do know is that my surgery changed me profoundly. I am not the same man, not in any way. Your Honor, prior to my surgery, I had a good marriage. I had a relationship with my two boys who are now 21 and 23. Then two and a half years ago, I found myself on the side of Highway 17 South with two bullet holes in me. A far, far cry from where I was prior to my surgery. In closing, Your Honor, if I don't ever breathe free air again, I will know that prior to my brain tumor and subsequent surgery, I had a very good record. And that I will leave a good legacy because for two decades, the things that I did every day mattered to someone. Thank you again, Your Honor, for allowing me to speak to you.